Or Jay-Z would be crowned the best rapper alive with 21 Grammys, 13 number one albums, and a net worth of $520 million. Before Jay-Z would stop promoting Cristal Champagne in his songs after the manager of the company made some ignorant and ungrateful comments about him. <laughs> I'm Cristal. Like the champagne? Before Jay Z and Beyonce became the biggest power couple in the biz, only to have his cheating scandal rock headlines and have people question if Bay would stick by her man. Yeah, and on top of that, there was the whole elevator fiasco. Before it was speculated that Jay Z had cult connections with people thinking he was a member of the Freeman Society due to his lyrics in Run This Town. Before Nas took a shot at Jay Z in his track Ether, Sartre wanted to be the best at everything he did from a young age. He was the top of his class with a strength in English, and he took to writing to express himself when his father abandoned the family. His skill was incredible, but his rap style was ahead of its time, and at first success, it didn't come. While he waited for the rest of the world to catch up, he took to selling drugs on the streets. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCredden, and we are doing the life and career of Jay Z prior to fame here for you on Before They Were Famous. Now, this is an updated version. I did this way back in the day and I thought we could do better. So here we go. As always, be sure to let me know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Carter was born on December 4, 1969 to Gloria Carter and Adnes Reeves. He weighed 10 pounds at birth. Poor lady. He and his three siblings, they lived in Brownstone with his grandmother, Haiti White, and their house seemed to be the life of the party. The whole extended family would come over and Sunday dinners, they would play loud music and have a wild time. Sean always loved music and thanks to his parents' incredible record collection, it was like being a kid in a candy shop or a kid in a record shop, I suppose. Well, anyway, he loved music and there was a lot of it around him. When Sean was six, his mom moved to the Marcy Projects where he would befriend Memphis Bleak, Ty Ty Smith, and Sauce Money. They played dice and basketball, and Jay was one of the best in the area at Duncan Hoops. He was always the top of his class, and he was especially good at English. But when crack was introduced to the neighborhood, life in the projects, it changed forever. What started as fist fights soon turned to something much more. And Jay, well, he was used to waking up to the sounds of gunfire just outside his door. Sometimes the endless pursuit of crack Leaves me tired and depleted. When he was 11, his father abandoned the family and Jay was visibly shaken. He became more introverted and started expressing himself through writing. Sitting at the dinner table, he would write down lyrics so small and messy that no one else could understand it but him. Soon he was banging on the table in his room late at night, mumbling over the beat and working on his signature flow. You thought that annoyed his siblings while they were trying to sleep? Imagine how they felt when his mom bought him a beatbox one day. Sean listened to tapes of Curtis Blow, Run DMC, Doug Fresh, and Slick Rick endlessly until he could understand every word that was being said. He also read anything he could get his hands on, including dictionaries, studying new words, and building on his rhymes. Soon his skill was undeniable and his flow was so fast and smooth, his friends started calling him Jazzy. From there, he would start rapping under the name Jay-Z. I suppose Jazzy Jeff was already taken, and he didn't want to be Jazzy Sean. It turns out there was another guy across the projects in his neighborhood by the name of Jazz. And this guy, he managed to crack into the industry and had signed a deal with a major label. Jay was introduced to him and the two bonded over their passion for music. He invited Jay to be in one of his music videos and soon the young rapper got his first taste of the music industry and it didn't taste that good. Apart from the record not doing so well, Jay saw how the promoters were trying to make Jazz into something he wasn't. So he took a break from music and took to the streets to pay the bills. He may have ditched class in favor of making thousands a day slinging crack, but for Jay, it was always a means to an end. He never stopped rapping and one night in a club destroyed local legend Big Daddy Kane in a freestyle battle. Kane took him under his wing and brought him on tour with him. But when Jay performed, no one seemed to get his style. Discouraged by the lack of success, he went back to the streets. While hustling, his cousin, Beehive, and close friend Clark were constantly on his case, bugging him not to waste his talent. Eventually, they convinced him to give it another go. He started recording demos, and then together, they began shopping it around. And I guess working the streets, they had some experience. They did a fantastic job. There were a lot of no's, but finally, producer Damon Dash said he'd meet with young Jay-Z and the two were like peas in a pod. Dash took over the business end of things and after a string of rap battles and concerts, Jay-Z became an underground sensation. Still, things weren't taking off like they should have and the root of the problem was the record. The resourceful men got rid of the problem by starting their own label. 1995, the newly established Rockefeller Records headquarters, well it came complete with Cox 
cockroaches and mice. It may not have been your standard office, but the work, it got done. The marketing strategy was fake it until you make it. And to get the attention, the boys would roll around in the biggest limousines, wear custom jackets, and even throw out stacks of cash at their concerts. After stunts like that, well, people couldn't stop talking about them. At the same time, one of his high school classmates, Notorious B.I.G., he was on the rise. And when the two would reconnect, they formed a strong friendship. They were always around one another, playing shows and working on new tracks together. Side by side, the best of buds. Jay-Z had a lot of cool friends. By the way, I've done it before they were dead on Notorious B.I.G. You should definitely check it out. In June of 1996, Jay started selling his first album, Reasonable Doubt, out of the trunk of his car. Biggie's appearance on Brooklyn's Finest came as a surprise to listeners, as well as featured artist Foxy Brown and Mary J. Blige. The album went on to get radio play and solidified Jay-Z as someone to be taken serious. The rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCredden and I do all sorts of celebrity bios on here. We've done a lot of rappers like Lil Wayne, Fetty Wap, Meek Mill, Gucci Mane, Rick Ross. There's like uh, a lot of videos, a lot of bios. So be sure to browse around. If I haven't done someone, let me know in the comments down below. We'll be sure to get it done. Or if you want something updated, let us know. All right, I'll see you guys in another video. If you, if you like it, pour the wing on it. That one. If, if you like it, pour the wing on it. Yeah, that's the routine for that. Yeah.